Now, hey, Chloe, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I am doing good. First of all, can I just say kudos to you for, for just dialing in yourself and not having 5,000 people connect you? Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's the life of technology now, you know? Well, it is. I think it's 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 made things so much easier now, right? I feel like, you know, back in the day, you you really needed to have like a thousand handlers just to kind of make things happen for you. But now with technology, you can do all that shit yourself. You I just be know. like, hey, poop, poop, poop. Hey, what's popping? Here I am, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> First of all, I'm so glad that we are finally able to make this happen. I know we've been trying to make Me this happen too. for quite some time. And I was super, super excited to talk to you. Yay, I'm so happy. I'm now, feeling mutual for yay! sure. So I, I was happy also to know they said you were just like really chill and laid back. I was like, already, that's my kind of girl. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so always. One of the reasons why uh, I do Woman to Woman, uh, I started doing this for uh, in March for National Women's Month to recognize the amazing contributions of women throughout history. But I also mm -hmm. felt like you know, we we pay homage to so many people who have gone before us that sometimes we yeah. forget about the people who are crossing our paths every day or maybe a woman that we see in the distance that I think yeah. we ought to also pay homage to. And so I created a wish list of, of women that either um, are a part of my circle um, yeah. or women that I've crossed my, you know, throughout my paths of my my journey and and people that I've never met like you that I wanted to talk to. Girl, you was right on my list. Really? Oh, well, I'm happy it worked out. Here we and, are together. Yes, here we are. And let me tell you why. First of all, I, I know you have a birthday coming up. I do. You do. July 1st. Yes. I do, I do. And I said, now, now, damn, I'm trying to think, what was I doing when I was in my early 20s? Oh, 20s. I'm a woman of a certain age. I mean, I'm still fabulous. Don't get it twisted. You're I said, fabulous. But, girl, let me tell you. But I am so proud to say that I see how well adjusted you are because I've watched you just like millions of other people go from, you know, being such a little one on YouTube, singing your ass yeah. off, you know, yeah. and now just exploding everywhere from, you know, the stage in terms of performing to to acting and, and, you know, producing and writing and all of these things, but you're so well adjusted. Thank, I'm trying. I'm glad it looks that way. <laughs> <laughs> she like goes behind the scenes, mama. <laughs> is it difficult? Is it, how difficult is it? Like life in general? Well, I mean, considering the, the change for you, like, I feel like it's one thing to be um, YouTube famous, right? Yes. It's another thing to be globally famous in terms of mm -hmm. now it's not just when you're dropping something that people are watching you. They're watching you all the time. Like all the time. All the time. Yeah. Chloe's pumping gas. Where? I mean, like they're watching you all the time. What is that pressure like? You know, I think for me and even my sister, we grew up never finding our self-identity in a celebrity kind of facade or mm. you know we've never had that fascination with being famous what our yeah. dreams and goals were it was to be able to sing and to act and have people of large masses and audiences appreciate the art you know the our first thought wasn't well what comes with that the fame and the celebrity and things like that so to me it this is just another job yeah and because of that that's how i don't let it affect my mental or how I am as a human being, you know, what, where I put all of the work and the pressure and attention to detail in is the actual art, the music, the stage, you know, the rehearsing, getting the scripts right, things like that. So that's yeah. where that pressure comes from, just from me putting it onto myself of wanting it to be perfect and getting it right, but never, you know, about growing in the limelight or things like that. Cause to me, it's, it's the same light we're all under, you know, this is just me. And I, I don't let that change who I am and how I live. Of course I have to be like more, like set more boundaries and, you know, be less naive and things like that because you never know people's true intentions and everyone always has something to say. So yeah. instead of just changing myself, I'm, I'm just more private about it, but I don't change who I am at all. 
I'm so glad to hear that. I, I kind of already figured for you to be that kind of person. And and I, I, I don't know you from a can of paint, right? Not on a personal level, but you come across as, um, I love what I do. I know I'm good at what I do. And as long as I'm happy with the the footprint that I am leaving, I'm okay with that. Now that's what you give off. That's the energy that you give off. Now I'm not yeah. saying that I don't think like most people, like including myself, you know, you have those nights where you lay like, oh Lord, <laughs> if I could just make it through another day, Jesus. Like I, I, I get it. I mean, but I think just in terms of being able to handle that pressure and you're right. I think yeah. sometimes when people get the kind of lightning in a bottle that you got, mm -hmm. right? I think that if you get lost in the messaging of social media, the messaging of what others consider your value is from day to day, mm -hmm. I think you can get lost. And I think we've seen that in artists, you know, in the past who've kind of lost their way and ended up losing their passion for what they do. Have you ever had a fear that you might lose the passion for singing? Because sometimes the industry, you know, with, with all of its red tape and, you know, this, that, and the other, it can cause you to go sour on something that you used to love so much. Yeah. So uh, the way I think about it, I generalize it completely. You know, any young Black 25-year-old she could have a dream and there could be people, family, friends, naysayers around her who are making her not believe in herself. So for me, the same principle applies. The only thing is that it's nine times out of 10, well, seven times out of 10 people, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's not really social media. To me, social media isn't the devil because my sister and I, like, because of social media, that was our platform to getting us here. And as a little girl, I always like inside, I always knew this was my purpose to perform and, and to create and things like that. I never knew how I'd get there, but I just had a strong belief. And I, my guess would have never been YouTube or things like that. So and, instead of wrapping it up into like this life and social media and the celebrity of it all, when we actually think about it, it's of course sometimes when anyone in our life tells us we can't do something, when we continue to hear it too many times, we will begin to believe it. You know, take me out of the equation, take the celebrity or famous part of the equation. That's just human beings. That's just how we are. So of course, there are times where I'm like, I'm doubting myself. And you know, I just dropped like a little mini tour doc that I had on in pieces, like externally, I was like fearless and confident and badass. And you know, that was in the midst of the time where people wanted to write a bunch of think pieces about my first week album sales when majority of the artists who come out with projects today, that's the numbers they get. Period. But because me, that's what they want to talk about because everybody likes to prey on someone's downfall. And I've never given anyone any reason to not like me. I'm a good person. I can honestly and genuinely say that. So something like that, which really holds no weight, especially not with my bank or any finances or my name. Girl, she said like with that. my bank, ain't that the truth? <laughs> no, but, but, but something like that, that's what, so I would rather people take that and try to assassinate my character with instead of something else, you know? But you know what? Let me say this. And I know, you know, first of all, you're a Georgia girl. I'm a Tennessee girl. The one thing I know for sure. Southern hospitality. And the one thing I know for sure, whether you uh, can sing and get number one records or sell, you know, platinum records and people have so much stuff to say about you. They would have it if you if you were CC on the corner, they would still have something to say about you regardless. I feel like exactly. it's, it's, it's just human life. It's, it's that's it. What we all go through. It's this isn't something that is just, oh, Chloe gets picked on. No, yeah. it's, so you know, girls, guys, you know, high school, middle school, it's constantly getting bullied, cyber bullied. And that's why it's so important to talk about mental health. And that's why I am very transparent about my mental health journey because I never want anyone to feel alone. It's not because I feel like, you know, it's something to talk about on an interview. No, I talk about it because I needed the support group around me to make me feel less alone so that I could even still be here on this earth today. So it's like, even me talking about, you know, the what people say online and things like that, I'm not special. 
like it's saying like that happens across the board, no matter if you're a celebrity and, you know, so it's important to talk about it so that we learn how to not give power into things like that and shift our focus on other things. I, I could not agree with you more. I will say one thing. You are special. And I think that the way the I, yes, universe, I, I, it's true, but, you are special, yeah. but I think the way that the universe is set up, right, it gives with one hand and takes with the other. And I think that's no matter who you are, what station you are in life, right? I think knowing that you're special, I think the universe now throws things your way to kind of test you to see, will you still remain grateful? Will you still have the same gratitude that you said you would before all of this happens? But again, I yeah. think it happens on no, no matter what level you are, whether you exactly. go to work every day and the chick in the cubicle next to you doesn't like you because, exactly. but you pray for that job. And now you're trying to decide, do I want to go knock her upside the head or do I still want to be grateful for this job? Exactly. I think, and but, and I, I think too, you said something about social media. I am one of those people, I do not believe social media is the devil either. I think it is just like money. Money can be the root of all evil, depending on how you use it, but money can also be a blessing. And I think social media for artists such as yourself, being able to reach large amounts of people in a way that when I was your age, could not be done. Honey, we had to go stand in line to get a ticket <laughs> to the next concert or to buy an album. Look at me telling my age. I don't care, honey. I'm happy. But yes, you look good. You, let me tell care. you. <laughs> and and I think that I am I'm happy for, you know, the younger generation that now has a way to display their talent in a way that was never possible. And I mm -hmm. think one of the things that it is also doing is helping in the way that you talked about mental illness. I know I suffer from anxiety. I have panic attacks and I used to not have that. I used to be super fearless. Not to say that I'm not now, but now on my platform, I make sure people know, okay, I know what you're seeing, but trust and believe on the inside, my heart is beating fast. I don't know if it's a heart attack or if I'm just nervous. And then I realize it's panic. And I think it's one of those things that, that we have to share and talk about so that people don't believe that life is glitter and gold and I'm walking on rainbows. No, sometimes my rainbows got tax in them. <laughs> like every yeah. now and then it's an issue. For sure. There what was would you say is the biggest thing that, that you have learned, let's say personally, in your journey, um, either something that your parents taught you that now you see, wow, my mama was right. Because, you know, sometimes when you're younger, you think you know more than your parents. And then oh, yeah. you live a little bit and you're like, you know, mama may have been on to something. What's the biggest lesson you've learned to date that your mama taught you? Ooh. The biggest lesson that I learned to date from my mom. Cause there are more coming just so you know, more lessons are coming. I would have to say one of the most valuable lessons she taught me when I was younger is to always look people in the eye when mm. you speak to them. I think that's, that's something that I've taken with me even up till now, you know, there's a hidden confidence within that and it's the respect thing. Yeah. I'm all about you treat people how you want to be treated. And just recently when I went on vacation, so I did like my first surfing lesson ever and something that the waves taught me. <laughs> Ooh wait, and that is that you are not in control. <laughs> yeah. And when you are trying to ride that wave, you won't be able to stand up and balance if you look down. The second you look down, you fall off the board. But when you find a point to look straight ahead, that's when you're able to ride that wave and not fall. Yeah. So that was something that really resonated with me. Like the instructor was just teaching me that, you know, pertaining to the board and the ocean. But I was like, that's life in itself. You know, that's when we tend to fall and, and feel like suffocated and less than when we look down on ourselves and our accomplishments and things that, you know, if we look back goals that we have reached, but because like with social media, we're constantly looking on what to compare ourselves to our accolades or what we've accomplished are never good enough. Yeah. So instead of looking down on ourselves, we have to look up and out and just continue to push forward on that journey. And that's yeah. when you won't fall. That's when you will balance and be able to ride the wave and go with the flow and go where you need, where God needs you to go. Right. So that's a recent lesson that I've been, you know, applying to everything recently. And yeah.
I mean, that's a huge lesson. And 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 my thing is, I don't really trust anybody who won't look me in the eye. Because I feel like, are you hiding something? Or are you not being honest with me? And my thing is, I feel as though if you look me in the eye, I do believe that it is a respect factor. But I also believe that it means that we are truly communicating. Do you know yes. what I mean? Also, the other, like with everything, there's, the, it's like the double-edged sword. Some, there are some master manipulators out there. Yeah, so is that? It's a lot of them, how, girl. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> staring deep into your soul and you can't yeah. believe, you know what I mean? But for me, that was a huge lesson for me because I lack confidence. So just always having the habit of looking someone in the eye instead of me like looking down at the floor or, you know, not being, it, it, that kind of forced me to have some sort of confidence when I speak to people. Huh. That's interesting that you would say that you, well, I mean, I guess a lot of artists are that way. And I think the misconception is because you are um, extremely gifted in one area that that would somehow now cover you like a blanket in confidence in all, yeah. er, all other areas. When you yeah, say like, you're not confident. Like yeah. Like comedians, like a lot of times you hear that they're the quietest people, like after their show or before their show, they'll be sitting by themselves in the room. Yeah. It's because like, that is the art of being a creative. We are offering up something that sometimes we may not be able to offer to ourselves. Wow. Now I've never mm -hmm. heard it put like that. And that I think that's actually true. And I would imagine too, in a position like that, people are always um, approaching you with their hands out or their hearts out, maybe not, um, you know, literally speaking, but metaphorically, because they're always looking for something from you, whether it is make me feel good with the song or entertain me, make me laugh. And by the time you give so much of yourself to people, they don't realize that sometimes you may go home and, and be completely empty. When you find yourself like that, what what do you do to to rejuvenate yourself, to fill yourself up besides go to Hawaii? <laughs> besides to, be honest, vacation. to be completely honest with you, being on the stage does that for me. That's what hmm. refreshes my spirit because when I'm on the stage, that's when I feel completely confident and fearless and feeling the energy from the people bouncing back to me while I'm on that stage. That's what gives me that you know, that fuel that I need. Uh, also, anytime I go to the beach and lay under the sun and go in the water, there's something so cleansing about the salt water. And also, I'm such an adrenaline junkie. Mm. Like, I am such an adrenaline, adrenaline junkie. Adrenaline junkie, like, like, like skydive, like, so like, that's like. Next on, that's next on the list. So I've done parasailing, I've done zip lining, and I was so happy that my instructors let me do zip lining upside down because it just wasn't enough for me. So because of that, I was like, okay, after skydiving, I might do bungee jumping. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah. Now, the zip lining, I, I'm with you all day. Upside down. I got to get my nerve up to that. But I, I don't think I could time, ever bungee jump. I would do it. The whole time, I just giggle. The whole time. Even the whole roll, time. Giggle. Yeah. Uh-uh. No. I, I mean, again, I've always wanted to zip line. I wouldn't mind doing that. I'm not going to lie and say I would do it upside down. I'm not going to do that. But there is something about two things. There's something about getting on a plane and then jumping out. <laughs> I feel like I'm not there yet. I don't want to jump out. And then also knowing I'm doing what feels like I shouldn't. And that is jumping off a bridge, jumping off a cliff and just hoping that. And I'm sure it will, obviously, for, you know, in the, in the terms of safety. But I, I don't know that I'm an adrenaline junkie like that to that level. Have you always been like that? It's It's recently, I think I've it's been a newfound thing. But what I love about it is that if you think about it metaphorically, you have no fear. You take a mm. leap of faith knowing that you're going to be caught, God will catch you, and you won't fall on your face. So it, it's almost like, a, it, it's for me, it's, it's more than just the activity itself. It's just about trusting and having mm. faith. Mm. Because in life, we we can't always stay in our comfort zones and, and stay on the ground when we're comfortable. Yeah. Where we find excitement is when we jump off the plane and when we do things like that. So I well, think out, that's why. Outside of out, jumping out of planes, what what is uncomfortable for you? 
Because it would seem as though, you know, living your life on a stage and 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 always being vulnerable uh, with your talents. Because I think from what I've been told that even when you know you can sing, sometimes it is a fear that when you get on stage and now you're in front of all of these people and you you ha- it has to be right because they're expecting it to be right. But what would you say is is the most fearful thing for you now? It might sound really silly, you know, to know that my fear doesn't come from performing or falling flat on my face in front of people. Like, of course, I get really nervous and like, like shaking. Like I always have to hold my god mom's hand before. And I just like I'm always praying. And she always has these huge diamond rings on. And when I squeeze her hand, she doesn't take them. <laughs> but the thing that's that scares me the most, the thing that I am learning as a young woman, it might sound so small and silly, but reminding myself that I'm good enough. Mm. That's what it is. Yeah. The big things don't, the big things don't scare me is that. But you would think that, and, and again, obviously I, I know just having talked to so many people, but it still astounds me that having accomplished so much at such a young age, um, having the adoration and obviously I know what also comes with that the flip side of that of other people people who look at you and feel like you have it all and I'm sure there's some days that you wake up and look at yourself in the mirror like wow I've I've come a long way it's it's interesting that you would say that sometimes you have to remind yourself that you're good enough where do, where does that come from I think that comes from exactly what you're saying the perception that people have of anyone succeeding in their industry that they have it all because when people think you have it all they continuously take and it makes you look at yourself like okay Mm -hmm. why are these certain people around me is it because of what i can offer them or is it because they truly appreciate me as a genuine human being so Mm -hmm. yeah i think growing up and being in a world where love has been conditional and based on things and what you can offer people and money and finances and things like that, that's where it comes in. So the exact thing that you're talking about, that bubble, that facade, that, oh. Yeah, such a sad thing though, such a sad reality. Yeah, yeah. money and fame doesn't buy happiness, it's the family and the ones that you love and like Hallie and my godmom and my kitten Apollo. And like, I just have the best like core group around me to where I know that I am loved and I know that they don't need anything from me. Mm. They just love me because I'm simply Chloe, not the Chloe on stage, but the Chloe who's afraid of the dark, the Chloe who's <laughs> nervous, the Chloe who builds her Legos and acts like a little girl whenever she's on roller coaster rides, that Chloe. Oh my God, that is fun. You know, I, I, I laugh at that because I feel like it is in the place of drought in the place of when you don't have those things that I guess maybe you create these scenarios, maybe romanticizing what you think it will be like. And then when you get it, it can be such a lonely place. And no matter how you try to explain it to people, like, listen, and what I do nowhere near the level that you do. And I know even for me, I feel like, why do people always think I'm at clubs, hanging out with celebrities all the time and shopping all the time? I'm at home with my two dogs, with my feet up, a nice glass of wine and my pajamas on, wondering, you know, what what I can watch on Netflix next. But for some reason, I think when you have success, when you have uh, any amount of notoriety and certainly money, I think people assume certain things about you. Absolutely. Like the grass is always greener on the other side. And it's, it's not like, I, I think because I don't feel as if I'm that, I always hate like saying like the celebrity fame thing, because it can go for, for anyone, you know, for sis and I, like we wanted to be in actual high school, go to prom, things like that. But we actually got to perform on the stage at Coachella. I mean, that 
blessing. Any any student in high school that you go to prom would be like, oh, I'm going to go be on the stage of Coachella. And sis and I are like, man, are we ever going to have a day where we can go to prom and be normal kids? So the grass will always be greener on the other side. What I've learned is to never wish to be somebody else because you never mm. know what they're going behind closed doors. And that's really what motivated and inspired me to write, number one, make it look easy. And also the album in pieces, because you see like this perfect doll like image, this, you know, this beautiful, confident girl who's sexy and fearless in her body. But, you know, if you come a little closer, you'll see all the cracks. The cracks. From these pieces. Yeah, I love I love that, though, because I feel I know when I was in my early 20s, I can't really say that it was really encouraged to as a woman especially a woman of color to to really feel out every inch of your body every inch of your skin and be comfortable in it there was always this sense of you needed to dim your light just a little bit because you're laughing too loud or or don't be that way or don't act like there was this whole kind of I don't know, constraints and belts and, and do's and don'ts. And, and I love seeing young women like yourself, others in the industry and out who have decided life is already hard enough. I only have one. And so when it is all over, I want to have, have nothing left in me. Like I want my tank to be on empty, whatever that looks like and however I decide to show up in the room. And so when when you first came out, well, you and your sister, um, I watched you guys on YouTube and I thought, oh my God, they sound like angels singing. It was just amazing. And then when you guys, not necessarily split, but decided to do your own projects, and obviously you both have two totally different kind of personalities as most sisters or most people do. Mm -hmm. And I was so proud to watch you just ignite. And I don't know if it felt like that to you, but I remember when you dropped the first visual. Um, I'm trying to remember what it, what song it was, but there, I think it was on Instagram and it showed you when it was all over. And you were just, you were, it looked like you were a combination of terrified, exhilarated. Um, After the VMAs? Yes. And yeah. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Just leave it all on the floor. And I don't know what they, whoever they is, I don't know what they are going to say. But that in that moment, I felt like I had the opportunity to be the young woman that I wanted to be, but couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I, th I feel like a lot of people feel that way about you, watching you move and, and regardless of, of what you may feel when you come off the stage, it is what you portray when you're on the stage. And I, so I, I find it so refreshing. And so I'm not one of those naysayers who are like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm like, no, I can't believe it. And I'm so happy. It's so good to see somebody acting, just not even acting, but just being their full, authentic, true self so that... When you lay down at night, you could say another day in the books of I did it my way and either you love it or you didn't. Yeah. And the thing for me, it's like it was never a calculated or a strategic plan. I'm just myself. Like ever since I was a little girl, I've loved to dance. And, you know, even when people have like been digging up our old Chloe and Halle videos when we were like eight and nine and 10, I still perform the exact same way. For me, it's really about yeah. communicating with my body and performing it. I, in everything I've done, it's been done before because I've learned from the greats. So the thing that always kind of made me giggled and said that's backwards is how society and the world preaches self-love but when one chooses to represent that in whichever way she may seem fit, she's ridiculed for that. And if you think about it, like, I don't, I'm, I'm very much to myself. I'm not a promiscuous person just because someone's sexual with their body and sensual with their movements, you know, doesn't make them. And even whoever is, that's their prerogative and their business. But I just think, for all of us to be so flawed, none of us are in any shape or form able to judge somebody. 
Oh, without question. Have, I think that's the hypocrisy of life. Yeah, <laughs> be pointing back at us. So it's like, if that's what people think is bad about me, hey, that's not a bad thing. At all. Because yet, I have yet to hear anybody call me rude or mean or selfish or anything like that. And that means I have done my job right and I'm being a good person. And that's and all I'm that matters. Myself and my family and my sister right. And yeah, if that's what people say about me as a bad thing, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Let me tell you, what is it that Eleanor Roosevelt said? Um, Well-behaved women seldom make history. And I think about that when I, I consider the, 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 I'm not going to say the sad, but I'm going to say the, the, the loss of an icon to us, Tina Turner, but she did Man, it on I, her own terms. She was yeah. like, I know I may not be accepted by this group. I'm cool with that. This is what I like. Look at these legs, watch me shake. It's what I do. That was one that really hurt to be honest, because to see how fearless she was. And even, you know, I was talking about how like, I'm an adrenaline junkie. See, I saw a video for the first time. I've never seen it before, or I've never known she wasn't connected to any harnesses or straps. Her running on the platform in yeah. the air. Uh -huh. in, heels. in heels, girl. And, and the way she would perform <laughs> without skipping a beat, without heavy breathing, you know, no pre recording, no lip syncing. Like she was a rock star and you could feel the passion through her body and she was someone who i looked up so much to as a performer and you know her and donna summer and you know there's just so many nina simone like women like her are the reason that i am able to do what i do unapologetically because i know it's been done before greatly and i could even just i could only hope or imagine to just be able to do just a little bit of that. I think if you keep going though, if you keep going and you keep the attitude that you have in terms of the, the, the humbleness and the, I'm gonna be a good human being, period, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. allow your light that you've been gifted with to shine the way that you have to, to date, just yeah. continue doing that. Because if you think about it, that, that's all she did. That's all Tina did. She was like, you know what? I know everyone wants to put labels on me. They don't understand why I'm wearing the clothes that I wear, dancing the way that I dance or, you know, uh, you know, doing things the way I want to. I don't want to sing sad love songs. I want to rock out. And yeah. a lot of people said, don't do it. You're too old for this. Or, you know, that's not your genre. You should stick to this. And she was like, no, no. What I'm going to do is do the, the gift that was given to me. I'm going to use it the way I want to. And I really see you the same way. I mean, and it does take a lot of courage to do it because every, it's interesting. I don't know what you think about this, but I feel as much as people want to be individuals, I think there's a lot of fear and they prefer to walk the, the, the wide road as opposed to the narrow, knowing that sometimes you'll have to walk it alone. I think it's easy to say I'm courageous and, and I want to be an individual. But then when you realize what that means, that you will sometimes have to fight alone with just your family and your close friends against the world. And it's always easier said than done. But I think people like Donna Summer. I think people like Diana Ross. I think people like Tina Turner, Nina Simone, and the list goes on and on. I think that's what they did. And I think you could be no different. You could do the same thing. Thank you so much. And you I know, really mean that. it's so scary to walk the road alone. Mm -hmm. And for the people who choose not to walk the road alone, I don't fault them either because <laughs> life is scary as shit. And a lot of times, <laughs> you get so many stones thrown on you for walking the path in the road alone. And there are so many people in life who don't even have a support system, who don't even have family that they can call on to feel more seen. They are completely isolated. And to know that there are people like that out there who have inspired me, I'm like, okay, if they can do it, then I can do then it. Then you can do it too. Be, exactly, exactly. So, you know, for whichever path or whichever journey people take, whether they want to do the one most traveled or the one least traveled, it is fine by me because it's life all is right. <laughs> life what is the mantra hard. that you use? What's a mantra that like my mantra is too much given, much required. I, yes. I, I believe that I believe that when the universe pours into you and you are blessed with certain gifts, I think there comes a responsibility, obviously, to be a good steward of that gift. 
but then mm-hmm. also to to be sure to share whatever that gift is with other people. And I think you do a tremendous disservice to the universe, to the giver mm-hmm. of life when you don't do it. What is the mantra that you live by? It's funny because that was the mantra that sis and I grew up on that, that was really, you know, it was constantly said in the house to whom much is given, much is given. Go to Southern. That's the South right yeah. there coming through. I, I, through and through. I, still, I still believe and I still live by that. I think the one thing that I'm trying to grow out of, however, is that yes, much is required, but I also need to give myself grace. Mm. because I've been conditioned all my life to be like workaholic workhorse and I can't get out of it. That's why it was so important for me to go to Hawaii on my own so I can, you know, put myself in an uncomfortable place, you know, where it forces me to do nothing, to not work, because that's where I get my validation from, my work, because I know no one can outwork me. But now I'm trying to shift my focus in just giving myself grace, balance, balance, balance. And instead of, you know, thinking to whom much is given, much is expected, which is true. And I still believe that it's also expected of us by God to give ourselves grace. Oh, without question. And to relinquish control and to give it to him and have faith that all will work out. So it's like, it's that balance thing. I think that's a good balance. And I think if you look at it like this, I, you can still believe that too much given much is required, yeah. but it's required on my terms. It's required yeah. in my time. I'm yes. going to do it. It's like the bill is due, but it ain't due today. Yeah. <laughs> it's due on it's, the 27th. Okay. The bill, the bill. We can't, we can't miss the bill now. No, we can't but miss the how bill. We, how we get to the money. That's on us. That's, <laughs> that's, on that's us. It. <laughs> What would you say is, is your favorite word like do you have a favorite word that you just love to say all the time i have a potty mouth girl me too i do i say let me guess let me get let me guess let me guess you let me see fuck off no uh (laughs) not 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 the off just without the just just fuck yes fuck i'll just say it all the time and and do you ever sing it do you ever sing all it? The time. Ba- all the time. No, just there's so ba- many like in all these unreleased demos that people have in here. You should hear the cussing in it. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> let me dial it down. I like I've made songs cleaner than what they were because I'm like, people gonna think I have a sailor's mouth. No, but you know what? Can I tell you something? For a very long time, probably, and I'm sure it's probably the Southern girl in me. I don't know, but for the longest, I would not curse. I wouldn't do it. I would not do it. I, Cause I always felt like, you know what, that, uh, who told, I don't know if it was my mama who used to say it, but they would say, if you cuss a lot, it's because you lack the proper vocabulary. But then I saw a study that said the smartest, most creative people cuss. And then mm-hmm. I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> it releases stress. And- it does. I don't yell. I don't argue. I'm a non-confrontational person. So like just saying like, fuck, it just helps like release something. And, you know, sis and I grew the same, grew up the same way. We were so scared to cuss and Grownish was the first time we actually really did. And like, I remember being at the table reading before Allie and I we were like, oh my gosh, we got to say these cuss words. Like we were freaking out and we were like 1917. So that was when I first started cussing. And now I'm like, you know, now you can't I'm stop. Free. <laughs> Speaking of your sister, I don't know if you've seen these girls on uh, social media or not, but it's these two little girls. You know what I'm talking about? So which one are you? She's like, what's her name? I'm like, send this, send this, send this. What's her name? (laughs) Now, I didn't, the girl in the the two little, the the clip of the girls. And and I guess the one of the girl was always getting bullied. And her sister's like, what's her name? What is her name? Like, I'm going to get her. Which sister were you growing up? I was the one crying to Hallie saying I'm being bullied. What? Don't tell me Hallie can fight. I mean, we're lovers, not fighters. Like, we're classy ladies. But, like, Hallie will verbally fight someone for me. I love it. And the reason I love it, it's like a ninja. It's very unassuming. You don't see it coming. Like, did, did she just cut me? I it's think like she the, it's like her quiet words. storm and and she constantly motivated and inspired me like even though I'm a year and a half older I would look up to her in that way and say wow how can she be so fearless and establish boundaries 
and and let people know not to mess with her and you know because she's an Aries, she's a fire sign she's mm. very dominant she's, you know on the outside she's like mm, but you can't mess with hallie and me you know that's how she is that's how i'm seen on stage like how i seem mm -hmm. on stage but as a human being i'm such a mush ball you know I, I'm learning to establish boundaries and I'm learning that people can't take my kindness for weakness anymore. So definitely, even now, I'm like, wow, like I'm still learning from her in that way. To be, honest. I love that. I, I saw you guys on the red carpet of her premiere and yeah. it, it's I, I don't think we get to see um, the realness of family and siblings on display like that enough. Yeah. I think we see individuals and then sometimes we'll get to see them with like, you know, their spouse or something, but to see yeah. the giddiness that you guys had as sisters. It, now I didn't grow up with any sisters. I have one brother. And when I saw that, I was like, see, that's why I want a sister so she could be cheering for me and, and nobody will understand our own little private language that we're speaking. Like I it's think, just for us. I think for me, and even just thinking about it, I'm getting emotional because I've seen the behind the scenes. Like this movie took three years to make, you know, it was being made in the midst of the pandemic and being there from the beginning with her audition process and running lines with her and, you know, from the screen test to finally seeing that moment happen and physically being able to have the dolls in my hand and even like the McDonald's little mermaid doll. I stole it from the after party. Well, I didn't <laughs> Adam for people, but it's at the front of my door and my place. And it's, I'm so proud because she worked really hard. She worked really, really hard. And like Hallie, I'm like mama bear with Hallie. Like mm -hmm. nobody can mess with her. Like it's easier for me to stand up for her than it is for myself, but to see how she has come into her own and found her strength and her power that she didn't know existed. Yeah. It's so beautiful to witness and I'm incredibly proud of her. And I think the giddiness is just like, it's like, look, it's here, the moment's here. And I'm just extremely proud of her, extremely. And I cannot wait, I think it drops Friday, Yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm world to see what I've always seen since I was a little girl. And most importantly, I'm proud of her for making it through, you know, because well, you know people what? Yeah. blitzing front, you know? Yeah. So Nobody knows how I'm, the sausage is made. Every time I see a billboard or a bus or a post or anything, like I'm sending it to her in our group chat with me and my godma, I'm like, look, another one. Yeah, that's my sister. That's my sister. Yeah. She's out of um, the States. So, you know, she lives here in LA. So I want her to feel like she can experience like what it's like seeing herself and where she lives. So I just keep sending it to her. I am just, it's, so I proud. think that is so beautiful. When I tell you, I, you are everything I thought you would be. I did not think you were going to be, listen, I've been around for a minute, honey, and I've seen some people whose attitudes and I, 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 let me tell you, I have, I'm not going to drop any names, but I've been around the block, but, it, but I, I always felt like when people do that, it is a fear of being found out about something or when they, what, when they're rude or mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't want or, you to get close. Or, or it could, yeah, it could be a shield of protection. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that. So people hurt people. Then there's that. Look at you preaching, dropping jewels, girl. It's true. But yeah, anytime, I, I just, I bless them anyway. An ass, yeah, anytime someone's an ass, I'm like, okay, it has nothing to do with me. And everything it's, to do with them. Yeah. But now yeah. you're not going to be an ass too much on me. Now we're not going to do that. That's, that's Oh, I, I block. I yeah. block. You gotta, you gotta do that. You can't, you can't have it. You can't have I it. I won't argue. I'm calm. I'm cool, but you're going to get blocked. Cause at the same time, as much as I have grace for you, I have to have grace for myself and give myself yeah. my own bubble yeah. of shield protection yeah. and love. Yeah. You are <laughs> See, I, I, I'm right there with you, but now I'm a Scorpio. So you are, oh. know. you are, I don't oh. know what that O was for. I don't know what the O is for. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know what the O is for. Chloe, what's the O? What's the O, girl? You know the deal. Scorpio, okay, Scorpios are very loyal. Scorpios yes. hold grudges. They're very vindictive, but they're very loyal. I, vindictive? Is that what we're going to go with that word? Can we come up with a better Scorpios word? Don't hold don't <laughs> Scorpios hold grudges. Don't Scorpios hold grudges. Maybe I'm holding die. a grudge right now. 
Okay. I'm holding grudges right now. <laughs> I know Scorpio's at the back of my hand. You sound very familiar with the Scorpio. Let me tell you something about Scorpio. We are fiercely loyal and protective. But don't mess with us. Don't do not do it. We will hold the grudge. It can be 20 years later and I'll be like. Kill you in the ground. <laughs> Why you slay me with the truth like that? Don't do that. No, I like, so like my favorite thing to ask people is what their sign is because Yes, it's really nice to like read about it, but I also like to feel it with the person. So it's yeah. like with each, say whichever sign I like start tallying up, okay, they're, most of them are like this way. Most yeah, like this. it's true. And so, so have you found what you find out about Scorpios? Is it true most of them? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like uh, 10 times out of 10. Same yeah. with Aries. Like I know Aries at the back of my hand because my sister's an Aries. And got my kitten Apollo's a Cancer like me. Listen, that is, if I had to be in cat form, he is me. He is so cuddly like me. We like, we are the hyper the same. Look, he's looking at me upside down right now. He's like, he sleeps so hard like me. <laughs> he eats so much food. No matter how much food I put in front of him, he will eat every bite and he will continue to eat. He loves everybody. Like he is me and I am him. First of all, I can't imagine. For, what position do you sleep in? Fetal position, eagle, uh, what's the other one? Fetal, eagle, uh, on your stomach. How, what's your favorite sleeping position? I'm all over the board. Not fetal though, but every other position I'm in, I'm a wild sleeper. Oh no. Don't tell me you wanted those to kick the covers off the bed, pillows on the floor. No, 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 no. Not kick the covers off the bed, but like moving around and like back and forth. Nah, I sleep in one spot like a rock, but that's the Scorpio <laughs> that I am. I said it. There you go. <laughs> Girl, listen, I could talk to you all day. I am so proud of you. you. I, and Thank I, I know again, you know, you sit and do these interviews a lot. I know you've heard every question you've heard every statement, but if you know a Scorpio, you know, when I say it, I mean it. I am excited when not just I see you, but when I see you and your sister, but I am excited to watch you. It gives me the same feeling that I felt when I watched Diana Ross perform in Central Park. Oh, now, I wasn't there, but I saw it on wow. TV and the way she was electrifying on the stage. Yeah. I, I, The way I felt when they were replaying the Tina Turner things and I knew I was going to be talking to you. I thought, I want her to know that I see that greatness in you and not to worry. And I know you don't need to hear this from me because I'm sure, you know, people have already told you, but just so you can add another one to the, to the, the crate, don't worry about these crazy folks out here, honey. Yeah. They going to talk about you, whether you're doing good or bad. You already know mm -hmm. the story. They build you up. They love to tear you down. Just keep being Chloe. Thank Keep rocking the stage. Keep doing your thing, girl. And know that if you ever need anything from me, I am right here in L.A. I'm going to be like that girl. Who? Who? What's her name? <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> I will come for you. I'm telling you. I got you. I got your sister. Whatever y'all need. Just let me know. I'm here to help. I, I, I'm super excited to see. Now, I haven't seen... The, oh, and congratulations on the tour. I know it was the very first time that you've headlined your own tour. I was super excited about that. I didn't get the opportunity to come out and see you here in L.A. I think I was that's flying great. that night myself. But that's the next great. time, I'm going to be right there. And if you need a background singer, baby, right here. Hey, what? What? Hey, come on. Come on. Mm. Come on. But come I have on. to keep mine right here. I know you can roll yours out. I got to keep mine in the pocket like this. You can still do it. <laughs> still do it thank you so much I thank you so much i appreciate you continued success bye. girl all right bye-bye bye, -bye.